Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this week's video. Uh, in today's video, what we're going to do is we're just going to add the last uh, bits and pieces for the weapon firing. Um, so we're going to do the line trace. Um, now, this is quite a simple system to set up. I just need to cover a few bits and pieces. I will go and explain it. You can see here what I've done is I've added in a few extra assets just to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, if I do get time at the end, I will cover maybe adding these characters. Not necessarily the, 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 the Lamborghini and the, the walls, because anybody can do that at this point. But um, essentially, what, what you can see here is as the line trace fires, you can see that I've hit the character there. And in the top left, after a few shots, it says AI is dead. And then same again for this one. Couple of shots required, and then AI is dead again. Or AI 2 is dead, because it's the second one. Um, yeah, so with that all being said, let's jump into the project and let's get this set up. Okay, so let's get started. Um, you may notice it looks a little bit different. Um, instead of actually just deleting the code that I'd already made, um, I decided to use one of my earlier backups. So unfortunately, the assets and the other sort of like AI character have been deleted. But if I get time at the end, I'll, I'll chuck in the AI character. Um, so yeah, let's get started with the line trace. So... Everything else here should look exactly the same as where we left off. We've just got the character rotation and the, the, the little line, the beam uh, on the floor and the, the spotlight, you know, all, all this should look pretty much standard. And as you notice, when we when we click the mouse, if you can hear that, um, nothing happens. There's no there's no weapon fire. Uh, and that's what we're going to build out. So let's just create some space over here. Um, and what we're going to want to do is, when we press the left mouse button, um, we want to we want to fire a line trace, find out what we've hit, and then apply damage to it. So you've got two ways of starting this off. You can either, um, if you right click and type in left mouse, you can either set it up where you've like hard coded that the left mouse button is the fire. Or if you want to go to your project settings, which you can get to by going to your, your main map, go to edit and then project settings, that'll bring up this window. And then on the left hand side under engine, you'll see input. You can click on that and we can add an action mapping. So if you drop this down, you may already have jump and reset VR. You just want to press this little plus and add a new one. And let's give it a name. Let's put this as fire. And for the key, we want, instead of none, we want to drop down go to mouse and then we want left mouse button or you can set it to whatever you want um, but for me I'm gonna have left left mouse button and um, with that set up now you can go back to your character and instead of having this hard-coded left mouse button now you can just type in fire and you should get exactly the same thing so you can see here input action fire or left mouse button choice is yours uh, I'll go with fire now I've set it up and uh, yeah that's that so, when we press the fire button, we want to create a line trace. So if you type in line trace, you get a few options, but we want to do a line trace by channel. Okay. Now, essentially a line trace by channel, um, you've got two channels really. You've got visibility and camera. And these are things that you can change within your character or your world, depending on what they are. So for example, if you look at the capsule component of your character and scroll down on the right hand side till you get to collision and drop down this collision preset you'll see here grayed out because it's it's a predetermined function but if you set it to custom everything would light up however let's go back to pawn um, you can see here under trace response we've got visibility and camera so it blocks camera but it ignores visibility so your your character wouldn't be included in a hit yep so you, you can change what you want to hit so if you only want capsule components for example or, or pawns you can uh, you can set this to camera um, you know there are other things to consider but um, typically visibility is the one that you go for and then if you look underneath that you've got mesh uh, and go down to collision preset you can see here that this is set up as a character mesh and same again it ignores visibility um, blocks everything else so what you want to do is when you create other characters you want to make sure that they block visibility but whereas your your character probably wants to ignore it so you don't get caught up in your own line traces so 
Apart from the trace channel, um, we need a start and end location. Now, the start location's typically going to be from our character, uh, somewhere on our character, or the camera that supports the camera. But um, you usually only go from the camera when you're doing a first person because you essentially your your head is technically the camera. Uh, but in a third person or a top down, the that doesn't work. That doesn't quite work the same. Um, so we'll go from the character, and then the end location is just going to be some distance in front of that. So you'll get the forward vector, you know, whichever way the char character is facing, and then times that by a distance, and that gives you your, your end end location. But don't worry about that too much because we're going to get into that anyway. But what I'm actually thinking of doing um, a different way ab about it, instead of doing it from where the character is forward, um, instead I'm going to get the actor as the start location and we're going to follow the mouse um, for the end location. Um, essentially we're going to mimic or copy what the aim line is going to do and that's exactly how that works. It takes the the mouse location and then times that forward uh, and use that as a as, a, as an aim line because that system already works and you want to fire exactly in the same place that your your line is aiming anyway so if I if I do two slightly different systems there's a, there's a chance that it's not going to work so um, es essentially we can we can copy this same system uh, and, and just make this a lot easier for ourselves. Um, so, so really, what you want to do is you you want to copy, let's say, the player controller, the get hit result under cursor by channel, uh, the break hit result, the find look at rotation. You don't need, um, but it's in the middle, so we'll we'll just select that anyway. Um, I tell you what, let's do a single selection. So. Play a controller, get hit under cursor, break hit, get actor location. We want to get the forward vector as well. We may as well get this multiplication. And then there's, a, there's an addition here, uh, just over the distance. So with these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nodes selected, hit control and C. Drag this over here and we'll paste. Okay, so these are, not, <laughs> these are all spread out now. Obviously, uh, let's just drag these over. Take well, let's zoom out a little bit. Drag these over. Um, right. So, first and foremost, let's just drag the get actor location. So we're going to start from here. Put that into the start, and that's 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 pretty much done. Now, for the next bit, you just want to grab these three. So this is the. Uh, get hit result under cursor by channel. So essentially this is doing a line trace um, from your mouse into the world and then hitting a location. So we're actually just going to steal that location um, and then times that by a distance uh, to, to give us sort of like um, the forward. So let, let's say the mouse is here. We, we want to know like my, my character, tell you what, let's just go in the world. So, the character's here, and the mouse is over here, but we want to go, what's what's in front of that? Yeah, so, it goes, it goes from the character to the mouse, and then it works out what direction is that kind of pointing in, and then times that by a, a weapon range, for example. You know, let's, let's add an extra thousand uh, units to that uh, to get like an end distance and then eventually the, the there will be an end to that to that line i think i've set it ridiculously high so you can't see it but on our line trace so for example if you've got like a shotgun you don't want it to be able to shoot to the back of the map but if you've got a sniper you want it to go as far as it possibly can um and, and we can set that up so that's where this arbitrary 2500 comes in here just randomly because i'm going to get the actors forward vector which is which way is my character pointing? Um, times that by a distance, and then that we're going to add that to wherever our mouse's position is, and that's going to give us more of a pinpointed uh, location. Let's say. So we just want to take location from here and plug that into this this plus, and then we can neaten it up. Now we've uh, now we've made that smaller. 
So you want to pop that there like that, and let's just pop that there. Alright, so we're, we're getting the mouse location, we're timesing it in the direction of the character uh, by 2500. Let's just change that to 500 because uh, that'll that, that'll keep it on the screen and it'll give me a good way of explaining how that how that's actually working. And then we just want to plug that into the end. Now the other thing we before we want to test this, we want to have the draw debug type set to for duration. And if we drop down here, we've actually got a draw time. It's set to five. That's a little bit excessive, but we'll we'll, we'll just take it for now. Uh, hit compile. And let's press play and let's just see what result we get from this so if I run around now and click you can see that I'm getting a line trace and there's a little red dot to say it's hit someone but if I move away from everything you can see that it ends here yeah but that's actually hitting something which is which is peculiar because it should be going straight forward so it should carry on but it actually it actually seems like it's dipping down, um, which we're, what we're doing, we're actually telling it to to take the height of the mouse. So let me exp let me let me try and <laughs> explain what the, what's happening here. If if I click here, what's going to happen is there's going to a line's going to a line trace is going to be made from underneath the mouse straight down into the world, and it's going to hit the top of the wall. So our weapon line trace, which is saying which way am I pointing, um, is going to say, right, well, I need to aim from the character up on top of this wall. So if I click up here, you can see that that line trace is now further up that wall because it's trying to have its end position at the height of where the mouse is. So another way to explain this is if I go up here and click down there, you can see in a strange way that it's it's now hitting the floor you can see there because it's 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 aiming to the height of the mouse which is wrong because in certain situations it's just going to go stupid um, and you don't want that because now it's shooting the floor which is is taking that distance away so to get around that what we could do, <coughs> excuse me, what we could do is we could break this location up and say I only want to know where its X and Y coordinates are and the Z coordinate we kind of just want to dismiss and say well I don't want that but let's just take our actor's Z location because uh, that's a that's a decent height I want to I want to shoot on the same level as where my character is at all times and we could plug that in instead so to do that, what we can do, unfortunately, we're going to need to break all of this up a little bit. So if we disconnect this one, and let's just let's not let's right-click on where it says return value, and you want to split. Now to plug this back into here, now we either make a vector like this, and then plug that in, and then connect up all of these, which is an option. Um, or alternatively, you could split this one as well and connect all of these up. Because for the start location, we don't want to change anything. But we need to do this because we need, we're going to steal this, um, this this Z location. So now, if you alt click, you can disconnect lines. Uh, I don't know if I just mentioned that. Um, now, we want to split this hit location of the mouse. Because if you remember, we only want the X and Y, and we just we don't we don't even care about the Z at all. So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to make a vector on this one because we, we need to make the vector this time because we're going to ignore this last this last one. So we want the X and Y, which is great, but we can't have the the Z just set at zero because that'll be like through the floor. So let's take the actor's height. Um, or Z and take that and then let's add that to this instead and then you can minimize this so it doesn't look as messy so let's let's just try and tidy this up a little bit before we run it 
Let's move that over here. And if I move that down, I'll tell you what I could do. I could put in a couple of... If you double click on a, on a line, by the way, it puts these little um, reroute nodes in. Um, but you can move them around. So you, you can kind of like try and prettify your uh, your blueprints. If, if, if the lines are not moving around as you'd expect them to, you, you can kind of do this to, to make your your blueprint look a little nicer because you know having stuff overlapping like that's not the greatest you know you can put that over there I guess uh, I'm not too fussed about stuff wrapping around like this when they're together but yeah I guess I guess that looks somewhat neater I guess so let me just talk over what we've got so we've got the actors location we're taking the X Y and the Z value and plugging that into the start because we don't want to change that but we've had to break it down because we want to steal this for the end location. So what we're doing is we're getting the position of the mouse in the world. Uh, which unfortunately does take into consideration the height of where it's clicking. But we want to, we want to remove the height from the mouse uh, and take in the actor's height instead. So we're breaking um, the hit result down into its, um, into its values, x, y. Uh, and then we're stealing the Z from the character. We're turning that back into a vector and then adding it to our distance calculation and plugging that back back into the end. And hopefully with all that said and done, now um, you can see that wherever the, the line is, it perfectly mimics it. And no matter what height your character's on, it'll always like if I click on top of the wall, it no longer goes above the wall. If I click in the distance, it will always shoot to the full length of the line. So the good thing is now you're actually getting, um, you're actually getting the full length. So you can see where I set it to 500 earlier, it, it stopped there. So if we go back in now, you can change your, your, your weapon distance here. Which, I tell you what, what you could do is you could promote that to a variable. Set that to weapon range. Yeah. Let's just drag this over here, make it neater. Hit compile and then give it a default value here of, let's say, a thousand. Now, later on in your game, what you could do is, depending on the weapon type you've got, would set. The weapon range so if you switch to a shotgun that'd reduce to 500 if you pick up a sniper it'd be a double to like 2000 um, and now you've got a line trace now just as a little bonus what you could do is obviously you will need to set up some health variables uh, before we do this but let's add some damage to the game so this is really simple so you just want to do apply damage and Again, what you could do, depending on your weapon, I'll leave this up to you, you could set up a select to select what type of damage it does based on the weapon, and also like what class it's got, but I, I, mine's just basic damage for now. So the base damage is the number or the value that's going to apply as a damage. So, I don't know, I've got a rifle, let's just do 20 damage. So it takes 5 shots to kill someone if they are at uh, 100 health, for example. Hit compile and now every time you that line trace hits, it's gonna it's gonna apply damage, but it's not gonna apply it to anything just yet because you need um, you need to break this. Let's go to break. You need to br whatever you, whatever your line trace hits, you need to get what it's hit. So the hit actor is gonna be the damaged actor. So you're gonna damage or apply damage to this whatever you've hit. So now this is not going to make any difference to your your game just yet because you're not actually hitting anything. So let's quickly just chuck in um, a health variable. So I add a new variable over on the left. I call it health. If it defaults to bool like that, just click on this little red bean next to your health and change that to float. Hit compile and then set your health to 100. Compile. So now you've got health. Now, unfortunately, you're applying damage, but you, you've nothing to receive damage just yet. So let's just quickly type this in, just as a bit of a bonus. So event 
any damage. There you go. Event any is just enough. But um, so here under damage, you want to go event any damage. So essentially, once this character detects that it's received a damage input, either being shot or something like that, this will trigger. So from this, what you want to do is you want to get your health. So get, you want to get your health, and then you want to minus a float. Oh, one sec. So take my health minus the damage from it like this and then I'll tell you what grab your health one more time but this time you want to set and then this is what is going to be set there so receive a damage input get my current health take the damage from it that I've received and then reset the health now obviously this is not taken into consideration have you got enough health to <laughs> remove any so this will go to negative this will just keep deducting it but you could quickly just add in a branch and say is my health greater than say look, let's just do it uh, greater than or equal to is it greater than or equal to one for example yeah if you've got let's move that up here if that's true then take the damage if it's false then uh, print string, you know, dead. Very basic. Not going to spend too much time on this because this is not the intention of the video. So now you've got that, what we can do, go back to your example map and find your character. So for me, he's under third person BP, blueprints, and third person character. I, I didn't mean to open it, but find it in your folder. If you want to right click and create child blueprint. Um, and then give it a name, just call mine AI or BP underscore AI. So this is just, I've just cloned the character realistically. Um, I'm going to open this up. I'm just going to select the spotlight and where the color is blue. I'm going to set this to, well, pink's good of any, but I'm going to set that to red. And then I'm going to click on my mesh and if you followed along with the previous video you will have this um you'll have this gun in the game um <laughs> and and surprisingly if you se select um the a4 as the character's mesh um material it gives you this kind of like weird cyborg looking character which we'll do as an enemy for now I guess and then what you can do you can chuck him in the world yep so he's he's nice and red now there you go now because you've cloned your character and we've just made that sort of health and all the other stuff um, you can see here the parent class is third person character now because that has this event any damage essentially now if we put a couple of shots into him which if you remember from the beginning when I talked about trace channel you'll notice there that all the bullets were just going straight through the character because this character um, is the same as ours and it's set up to ignore um, it's set up to ignore in the collision visibility tra line traces so underneath your AI that you've just copied hit your capsule component go to the collision on the right hand side and set the collision preset to custom and then you just want to tick block visibility hit compile and play and then now if you shoot your character you'll notice you'll get a hit result and now it says dead in the top left hand corner because you've shot it five times and his health's reduced to zero so there you go that is um, the line trace set up there was a few little extra bonus elements in there um, if that helped you out, please consider giving me a like. If you like the video and you want to see more, consider subscribing. Um, also, any feedback is welcomed. Um, if I've missed anything out, if you want me to be a bit more in depth. I tried to speed through this a little bit more because I've noticed my videos are quite lengthy and I feel like I personally wouldn't want to watch 40 minutes of a video. I like getting to the point, but there are I need to balance between the people who want more detail and 
and, and those who just want to get on with it. Um, so just leave your comments down below. You know, if the majority fall under quickly, I'll speed these up and I'll miss out bits and pieces that you know I, I think more tailored to absolute uh, beginners. Um, but that being said, if if the majority of you are absolute beginners and you want me to slow down even more, or if you're happy with the pace that it is now with what I'm talking through, that's good as well. But I won't know without the feedback, so please consider giving me a comment down below. And anyway, that's enough from me. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next week. Leave